If you guys just keep coming back for more and more, you must be gluttons for punishment, or maybe just for serious chemistry or science nerds. Admirable. So here goes. I have just a few more examples of uh, some, it looks like calorimetry in uh, solution. Just so you remember, you know, a few basics. This door, just forget this chicken scratch down here. I'm not sure what I'm trying to talk about. I have the more complete description on the next page. We put 125 grams of water at room temperature, and we have potassium bromide, 10.5 grams, also at room temperature, same temperature. And I add them, and they dissolve, and it gets colder. It's an endothermic dissolution. What's the enthalpy change for dissolving the salt in joules per gram and kilojoules per mole? Assume the specific heat capacity of the solution is the same as water, and no heat transfer occurs to the calorimeter. Potassium bromide is 119 grams per mole. Interesting. Well, I'm probably going to have to change 10.5 grams of potassium bromide to moles at one point, some point. Um, but probably even more important than that, I'm going to have to use that Q equals M times C times delta T equation. Remember that one? Yeah. Oh, don't go that far down. Helps if you talk to it. Sorry. Operator error. That's me. Okay, here we go. So Q equals M times C times delta T. The total mass is uh, 125 grams of water plus 10.5 grams of salt. And the total mass that's, you know, changing in temperature. Uh, they both started at room temperature. That's convenient because if they didn't, it'd be a huge hassle. 4.18 is the assumed, presumed, probably a good assumption because most of it's water anyway. Specific heat capacity and the temperature change from 21 to 24. Uh, this got colder, so technically it, I stuck a negative there. Although we really just have to ask ourselves what that negative means. In terms of Q, I suppose it, it says it got colder and uh, it's endothermic. Um, the dissolving is endothermic. That's tricky. So per gram, anyway, it's 1756 per gram. Per mole, it's 1756 per whatever that mole number is. Uh, did I calculate it? I didn't calculate. I didn't write it down. I calculated it. Change grams to moles in the grams to moles in the denominator. Um, this is going to get me in trouble and a can of worms, but I don't want you to have to worry about it. If I know that it's endothermic, hang on, my wire's slipping on me, my microphone, I think I got it fixed. If it's endothermic, I know the delta H must be positive. Um, sometimes I will say that delta H is negative Q per mole, but that can get you in trouble too. It's best just to say, use positives and negatives at your discretion, keeping track of the absolute value, in the end asking yourself, what's the convention? Exothermic, endothermic? Endothermic has delta H being positive. Okay, uh, I, I've always said physicists and chemists throw positive and negative numbers around like there's no tomorrow, but there is a reason just because we've agreed to do it all in the same way. 11 grams of calcium chloride dissolved in 125 grams of water. Both substances at 25 degrees. What's the final temperature of the solution? Assuming no heat loss of the surroundings. Specific heat capacity of 4.18. Oh yeah, this is a balanced thermochemical equation. So this uh, negative 80, negative 81 and a half kilojoules means it's exothermic, so it's going to warm up. And i got to figure out how much it's going to warm up. 11 gram sample is added to 125 grams of water. This looks similar to the last question, doesn't it? I think it does. So one mole of calcium chloride dissolved in water releases 81 and a half kilojoules of heat energy. So I took the 11 grams and changed it to moles. Then I said, mm, then I realized that that number of moles, oh, no, excuse me. I said that quantity of salt relates to this number, 81.5 kilojoules, uh, released. I could stick a negative in front of it, but like I said, I just use it at the end to say, uh, what's the nature of the heat flow energy change? Um, so one mole of calcium chloride gives off 81.5 kilojoules. So if I don't have one full mole, I'll use the, this as a conversion factor and uh, calculate the final temperature. Oh, did I really do that? I did. Here we go. 
Well, this 8-ish kilojoules, or 8077, sometimes he's a 7 subscript that has a non-significant digit. But, um, oh shoot, that should be kilojoules. Snap. Well, you're smart enough to catch it, right? Fix it, would you? <laughs> 8.077 kilojoules is 8077 joules. And then I said, well, my final temperature must be warmer than my ending temperature. Um, did I say that? Oh, yes, it's exothermic. This dissolving is exothermic. So my final temperature must be warmer than my ending temperature. I'm just going to keep it simple and do this. Take that 8077 joules of energy released. This is going to be larger, and it solves to 39.2 gram, 39.2 degrees Celsius. So if I go from 25 to 39.2, and my um, total mass is 136 grams, and my heat capacity is 4.18, it all works out. Easy cheesy. How much heat is absorbed by a copper penny with a mass of, oh, I did I really? I think I did, no, a copper penny. It's whose temperature raises from negative 8 Celsius, so it's in a cold freezer, up to 37 Celsius, which is a little bit warmer than room temperature. And I must say, this is a fairly simple one. I just use that heat equation, the mass of penny, specific heat of the copper, and the change in temperature. Looks like, what's that, 45 degrees Celsius-ish times 0.385 times 3.1, if I'm not mistaken. That energy is absorbed by the cold penny because uh, it warms up. A piece of metal at 85 Celsius is added to water at 25 Celsius. The final temperature of the, both the metal and the water is 30 degrees Celsius. Which of the following are true? Heat lost by the metal is more than the heat gained by the water? Heat gained by the water is more than the heat lost by the metal? Heat lost by the metal is greater than the heat lost by the water. What? Okay. <laughs> Heat lost by the metal is equal to the heat gained by the water. I'm going to go with number four. Uh, yeah, they transfer a certain number of heat, and the metal loses the heat, and the water gains the heat, but the amount they transfer, amount they transfer is exactly the same. Um, last example. Ooh, it's a big one. Zinc is added to phosphate. 90 milliliters of 1.56 molar zinc Ion water is added to 100 milliliters of 0.986 molar phosphate uh, aqueous. I don't know why I use zinc nitrate. The spectator's nitrate, so I should have should have could have would have left that off to simplify things. But you can see that here from the balanced equation, it's a three to two ratio. Interesting. The temperature is increased from 24 and a half to 26.1. Assuming the volumes are additive, the density is one, and the specific heat that should be a capital J. I apologize. It's the same as that for water. What's the delta H for this reaction in kilojoules per mole? Well, I'm thinking Q is coming on, but do I need a I ah, Chihuahua? I do. It's a limiting reactant question. How did I know it's a limiting reactant question? Because they gave me amounts of this reactant and amounts of this reactant. So 140 millimoles of this reactant, 98.6 millimoles of this reactant. Looks like I need three halves more of this. Oh, Lord. I have to do a little calculation, don't I? I do have more zinc nitrate than lithium phosphate, 140 as compared to 99-ish. But the question is, do I have three halves more? 98.6 times three halves, the molar ratio of three halves gives me one, almost 150. Um, ah, I did it wrong, backwards. Here we go. Doesn't matter which way you do it. 98.6 millimoles of lithium phosphate or phosphate ion. Um, converts to moles of zinc ion in a 3 to 2 ratio. 2 moles of phosphate to 3 moles of zinc. I need 150 almost millimoles of zinc. Since we do not have this, we don't have, we only have 140 millimoles of zinc, zinc's a limiting reactant. In other words, 140 millimoles are limiting. So, also making note here that 1 gram of water is 1 milliliter of water, and the total mass is probably 190 grams. Um, the zinc is limiting, so they told me the temperature change, the specific heat, and the total mass. So I got that. As I got it as a positive number, but I know it's exothermic. 
So if I go to write my delta h, I know my delta h should be negative, so I gotta throw a negative in there somewhere. That seems sloppy, careless, and unjustified, but it is all of the above. But carefully, some being carefully careful with my sloppiness. And it's exothermic, so I said 120 1270 kilojoules. Sorry, 1270 joules, joules, joules survive, divided by 0.14 moles, which is 140 millimoles, the limiting reactant, gives me 9-ish kilojoules. And I stuck a negative in front because I knew it had to be exothermic. Whew. Well, don't crucify me. I'm just the messenger. Ask questions. Talk to your TAs. And it's amazing you made it through this video. You deserve some kind of a ribbon or something or a cold beverage.